Morning, everybody. I would love to be able to be in church and to see you all face to face, but obviously we're in lockdown 2.0. But even in the midst of all this, God has got a plan and he knows what's going on and he is in control. And I want to encourage you with that. Last week, Thursday, I sat down and I tried to write this message and I knew that God had given me this message to share during the last lockdown. And I thought the opportunity and the time to share it had come and that now was the time. When I came to write it down, I just couldn't. And I felt like it was almost like the Holy Spirit, like God was stopping me from writing this message down. Later on that week, I began to realise that we'd be in another national lockdown. And on the Sunday when it was announced, I then got the understanding that God wanted me to share this message in a different way. And that's why I couldn't write it down. So here it goes for you. I can't wait to see you all again in person. And this message I've just nicknamed to myself, The Melodies from Heaven. And so let's get into the scripture. Now, the Bible says that we should constantly come before the Lord with a new song and with singing. And there are many verses that speak about coming before the Lord with a new song. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples from the scripture. Psalms 95 reads, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. And we've also got Psalms 40 verse 3, which again is another one of these joyful psalms, which is telling us to sing aloud unto the Lord. And it says, he has put a new song in my mouth to praise our God. Many will see it and fear and trust in the Lord. Now, it's very easy for me to stand here in the middle of lockdown in my room when I'm happy and when everything's working out well for my life to turn around and tell you that you've got to praise God through hard times. But I don't think that's necessarily going to help anyone to be able to do it. But when I read the scripture, I read about even the heavens and even the angels in heaven constantly getting a fresh revelation of who God is, which enables them, which empowers them and what puts inside their heart and their spirits the ability to worship. For example, the angels of heaven in the book of Isaiah and in the book of Revelation, they're looking at the presence of God. And as they look at him, they call out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. There is a constant revelation of who God is. And as a result of seeing God rightly and getting a better understanding of God from one moment to another, their heart is filled with a new song of praise for who God is. And in the book of Revelations, we also read about the angels of God praising the one who made us. And it says, and they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and you have redeemed us to God by your blood, out of every tribe, tongue and nation of people. And so it's very clear that this new revelation, that there's only one person that's able to open the Lamb's book of life, and that is none other than Jesus Christ. He alone is worthy. And as they received this revelation that God, that Jesus is worthy, that they began to sing his praises. Let me tell you this. God doesn't tell you to rejoice. God gives us a reason to rejoice. And when we look at Jesus and when we have our eyes affixed upon him, we get a new revelation of how good he's been, how merciful he is, how much he loves us. And it empowers us in our spirits to begin to worship God. We don't force the worship of God. God naturally is worshipped from us when we have a right understanding of his power, of his majesty, of his awe, of the wonder, of the magnificence of how great it is. You see, I worship God because he came and he died on that cross for me. The Bible says that the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, washed away my sins and separated me from the mistakes that I'd made and saves me from judgment and from hellfire. And better still, I'm telling you this, he didn't just wash me to forgive me, but he washed me because he loved me to give me a second chance and a new hope in this life. And I'm not going to allow everything that's going on around me right now with the virus and the lockdown and not being able to be in church and having to do church in your front room or even in your bedroom. I'm not going to allow any of these distractions from the enemy to steal my victory and the joy that God has put in my heart. Because I'm telling you this, he loves me. He's called me he's got a purpose and a plan for me and I'm even sharing the word that he gave me in my secret place right now to reach you because God is in control and he's got a plan so let's pray father 
We pray that the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, the God of Daniel, the God of a people that were separated and were estranged from being able to meet in the house of God. I pray that Lord, as you were the God for them and you delivered them through the files, through the trials and through the fires, Lord, so to deliver us, be with us and reveal yourself today and give us a new song. Lord, I ask, give me your words and not my own right here today. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. You see, we've got to be careful. We don't just tell people what to do, but we show them Jesus and a reason to do it. He is the reason that we live. The Bible says that Jesus is our light. He is the light of the world. Jesus is our song. Jesus fills our hearts and he makes us glad. He is our peace and he's our protection and our shield. In the Bible, we read about King David when everything was going wrong, when all of the women were stolen away from him and a band of people. The Bible says this is what David's response was. And it reads, now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because of the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. When it was all going wrong, David turned to God and he began to pray. He began to worship. I can imagine him sitting there writing psalms and singing a song unto the Lord to encourage himself because everything was going wrong around him. His enemies had stolen his people's wives and their children and their families and everyone had turned on him. But David turned not against himself, but he turned to the Lord. He didn't wax himself heavy with depression, didn't make himself feel alone. No, he looked for the one person that would always forever be with him. Right now, I can't be with you. You can't be with everyone in this church in this season. Yes, we can connect digitally. Yes, you can pick up the phone, but right now, practically, physically, the only person that can be with you at this moment is your immediate family and Jesus. But that's okay. Because we can encourage ourselves in God in a time of worship and draw near to the presence of God and find him for ourselves. The last lockdown, my theme was really prayer and getting deeper in my Bible. This lockdown, I really feel that God's put on my heart, worship, worship, and to really just spend that time alone with God. I'm still going to pray. I'm still going to dig deep into the word. But you know what I'm going to do this lockdown? Worship is the word that God's spoken to me. You see, we sing because we understand who God is. We sing because of the joy that he brings in our life. We sing because of how great he is. But in the Bible, we also read about how the children of Israel, how they at one time, they felt like they could not sing. And it reads in Psalms 137, it says, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? The children of Israel had in their mind that, you know what? We've been delivered and we've been taken captive as slaves from our own land. We've been stripped and pulled away from Jerusalem. We've been pulled away from the temple, which was the house of God to them. And they've been taken as slaves in Babylon. And now they're asking us to sing a song. How can we sing? How can we rejoice when everything is going wrong around us? But the reality of it is that we've got to rejoice, not because everything's going right around us, but we rejoice because God is truly the one that is with us. And this is what we've got to focus on. Focus on him and not what's going on around us. Focus on the rock that is unmovable, Jesus. When we focus upon him, nothing else matters because nothing can take and separate us from his love. We've got to keep our eyes affixed on Jesus. And so here the children of Israel are, they're perplexed and they've lost their song. But the truth is that we shouldn't be losing our songs because what's going around us. In Psalms 118, it says, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. That's right. God himself is meant to be our salvation, our strength and our song. It's him that we sing to. It's him that gives us the joy. It's him that gives us the victory, the rejoice and the praise that flows through our mouth. It's all because he is with us. And when we see this and when we have this perspective, our song becomes easier. Our prayer becomes lighter. I'm telling you that focus it on Jesus is my tip for this like that. Now, in Psalms 137, you'll notice that the children of Israel have been carried into captivity. They are so focused on what they cannot do that they've forgotten all that God has done. They've forgotten the freedom that they have. You know what? We're in a lockdown right now, but our minds are free. We're free to worship without restriction in our homes. Nobody is stopping us from getting a hold of God and getting close to him. But yet there are so many that are like, 
Why am I not in church? I'm not with the brethren. I can't focus. I can't do this. No, you can do this. God is with you. And listen, church, we will always be connected through our prayers and through Jesus. Nothing can separate us from our brotherhood with believers through the spirit of God and through Christ his son. Nothing has separated us and nothing ever will separate us from God or from one another. This lockdown is a small little season. We'll be out of this before you know it. But God's brought us into this to teach us something. God's brought us in this for an opportunity for us to grow and to mature and to develop in our walk. God wants to do a new work and new things in your life. And I want to encourage you that this isn't a problem for us. This is an opportunity for us. But you know what? We're going to be back together before you know it. And being in the house of God with one another, I prefer to be in, locked away in my room. But God knows what he's doing. So the children of Israel, they've been carried into Babylon. And if we read the rest of Psalms 137, it actually says this. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it. For those who carried us away captive asked of us a song. And those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, give us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Here the children of Israel are being tormented. They've been carried away captive. They've put up their harps. They've put down their musical instruments. They've left them on the willows. They haven't thrown them away, but they've left them. They're planning to come back to them. When things get better, we'll rejoice. Listen, don't let that be our plan. We cannot be so focused on we want to be together that we refuse to rejoice and accept all the good that God is doing for us right here today in the land of the living. We've got to allow ourselves to praise God, even through the midst of the storms and the trials. Like Paul and Silas in the jail cell, they rejoiced and they praised God. You're free in your spirit. Jesus has set you free from sin. He set you free from shame. Don't become bound to your current situation. Let your mind be free and liberated and remember all that God has done and that God is with you. Don't put down your instruments. Then the Babylonians, the, the people of the world, what were they doing? They were asking the children of Israel to sing one of their songs of rejoicing. Why? Because the world wants to be entertained by us? No, more than that. The world needs our song. The song that we sing, the praise that we have, the love and the joy that we have for Jesus. The world is desperate to hear it. They don't understand it. They can't comprehend it. So they just want to hear the sound of your song. Let They want to hear a Christian rejoicing. They want to see your smile. They want to see the victory as you walk down the street. I'm not asking you to put it on. Listen, if you're heavy hearted, I'll tell you this. That at the end of Psalms 137, those children of Israel that weren't able to focus on God and to sing in the midst of the storm, they began to pray against their enemy and they began to speak judgment against the Babylonians that had taken them captive. As it says in verse 8, O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed, happy are the one who repays you as you have served us. Sometimes when we cannot sing a song of rejoicing to God, and we're in that desperate place, let that heaviness in your heart push you to prayer, push you to fight a battle in the heavenly places. Don't allow the emotions that you're going through to be wasted. Focus and direct them on God's purposes so that you can draw near to him through every situation in life. Whether you're rejoicing about what God has done and what he's going to do, or you want to fight against what, what you're going through right now, allow your emotions, everything that you have, all that's in your heart to be used for God's purposes in these seasons. We've got to be like the children of Israel. We've only been sent to our bedrooms. We've only been sent to our houses. We've only been told to not gather in public. But I tell you what we can do. We can still go before the Lord. We're not slaves like the children of Israel here. We're in a much better position. And I want us to learn lessons from them that we are to be obedient to God. And we're meant to praise, rejoice and sing to him through every circumstance and situation. You see, life has many songs. Before I was saved, I was a man that would listen to a fair bit of music. I had music when I would go out. There was music when I would fall in love. There was music when there would be a breakup or a heartbreak. There was music at the family events. There was music to get me excited. When I worked in retail, I realised that it wasn't just me that had music for every moment, but retail understood this. And so shops will play sensual music when they're trying to sell their clothes that of a sexual nature. And your, even the way that you walk changes as this different background music 
It begins to play in the retail stores. Why? Because music carries a spirit. When you listen to depressive and somber music, you tend to mellow yourself out and you tend to be a bit more reflective and a bit mournful. When you have happy and joyful music, we tend to sing and dance and rejoice. Music carries a spirit with it. There's so many people that listen to music of death or that listen to the music of lust and of this world. Be careful that you don't get drawn into the song of the world because the enemy wants to make you distracted from the things of God and to live in the flesh. This is why I love worship music so much. I want to be in God's presence. But note this, that music will be used of the enemy and it is spiritual. In fact, Paul the Apostle notes in Ephesians chapter 5 just how spiritual music is. He says, Do not be drunk with wine, which is an excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing melodies, singing and making melodies in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to say one part of that again. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns and spiritual songs, making a melody to the Lord always in your heart. Really focus in on that. We often notice that we're in a spiritual warfare in Ephesians chapter 5. But what we need to realise is that God has given us a melody to make in our heart. God has put a song of rejoicing and of praise and of thanksgiving in our heart that we've got to tap into because the Bible says that it's a spiritual song. That means that we can change the spiritual environment around us. As we begin to sing, you need to know that God inhabits the praises of his people. That's why when we come together and we all worship and sing together, the presence of God begins to manifest itself. But that isn't just for when we're in the church service. That's for also when we're alone in the secret place. You can put your headphones on and you can get yourself lost in the music and just enjoy all that God's presence would bring. And God will speak to you in a time of worship. God will strengthen you in a time of worship. God will be with you in those times where we would just sing and get together with God. I want to tell you to sing and to worship God this lockdown and encourage yourself and it will make your prayer life easier. Focusing on him will take away the sense of loneliness because you'll get a sense of his presence. And that's what God wants. He wants us to get a sense of his presence, that he is with us, that he would never leave us nor forsake us. And so we've got to keep encouraging ourselves. But you know what? There is an enemy. And the Bible says that Satan is heavily influenced by music. He's heavily involved with music. In fact, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, we read about the king of Tyre, except this passage is also speaking about Satan. And it says this, you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the bevel, the onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day that you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were in the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created till iniquity was found in you. Notice it speaks about Satan here in the Garden of Eden. Remember only Adam, Eve, God and the serpent were in the Garden of Eden that we read about in the book of Genesis. Satan was there, the devil was there, that serpent of old was there. It was none other than the devil that was in the Garden of Eden. And he's being described here, and it speaks about he, how he appears. And his appearance is these precious stones. And what do these precious stones like diamonds and wedding rings do? They sparkle as they reflect the light that shines upon them. And this is what the devil was made to do. He was made to reflect the light of God and to magnify God's light in different directions so that the world could see the beauty of who God is. That's why he was made with precious stones. But there's another clue about the devil's purpose here. It speaks about the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes or your tambourines and your pipes these these musical musical pipes that you would breathe into and you'd press all sorts of holes and cover it and sounds would be made this is a picture of satan he was a tambourine and he was a woodwind instrument and all of these pipes and he would be playing this melody and for this reason many people believe that satan may have been a worship leader in heaven before his fall and rebellion 
Well, if we go to the book of Isaiah, again, we have another passage that speaks about the judgment of Babylon. But here again, it takes a little sidetrack for a moment and begins to speak about the devil, about Satan. And it says this, your pump is your pump or your pride has brought you down to the grave or to Hashem. And the noise of thy vows or the noise of your instruments, it may read in another translation, the worm is spread under thee and the worm has covered thee. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How thou art cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations. Here we see this picture of Satan that's fallen and he's got the noise of his vows in the King James Version, which is basically the noise of a violin, the noise of his stringed instruments. In many translations, it may even read stringed instruments. It's describing Satan before his fall as being this musical creature. Why? Because his purpose was to bring forth the light, was to usher in the presence of God, was to go before God and declare and to announce his presence was coming. I believe this was probably the role of this anointed cherub that would stand before the presence of God and would just draw people into the presence and the worship of God. Song was a part of Lucifer's ministry in my belief. And I want you to be noticeable about this because when somebody falls, they don't lose the gift and the talents that God gives. No, the gift and the talent that God gives are without repentance. And so Satan still uses music today to try and lead and influence many people to go astray. Don't be caught lost in the world song because I'm telling you, the devil wants you to be lost in that song of despair, of moaning and of discouragement when really he wants our song and the melody in our heart God wants the melody in our heart to be one of thanksgiving and praise and honour and glory to him through it all. We've got to be careful that we don't allow that, that old man, Lucifer. Lucifer means the light bringer or the light bearer. Lucifer was actually the name of one of the stars in the sky, Venus. And Venus would be the last star that would rise up in the sky before the sun would come out. And it was a picture of the devil. He would be trying to rise and to outrun the sunlight and to be that star in the sky that would be seen prominent. But eventually the light always comes and eclipses it, as you'll see in the video that I'm playing now. Notice that you can see a little light that's been highlighted and circled as Venus. And as you look at that morning star, Venus, notice how it gets fainter and fainter as the light of the day star, the bright and morning star appears. It's a picture here. It's a picture of the battle between Lucifer and God. Lucifer is trying to be the brightest star in the heavens. He's trying to take that number one place. But yet, the second that the bright morning star comes, Jesus, we see the power of God completely overpowers the devil and you cannot even see even a slight bit of satan because the light of god is too bright and it reminds me of this passage that i found in the destruction of satan by jesus in the book of thessalonians and it reads for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way then the lawless one will be revealed whom the lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's right, that the devil is defeated by God through the words, through the song, through the praise that comes out of his mouth and through the brightness of his coming. In the same way that this morning star is a picture of the devil trying to fight against the bright morning star, which is God. Notice how the devil works here. The devil has taken one of the names of God, the morning star, and he's tried to take it as his own. But it's not just that. God isn't just a morning star. Jesus is the great and bright morning star that comes and eclipses the work of the devil. And he shows that he is so much greater than the devil. And in the book of Thessalonians, Thessalonians I should say, we see how God through the words of his mouth begins to put the devil in his place and reveal that God is so much greater. Through the stars and the sky, we can see that the sun comes up and that the power of the devil and the brightness of the devil and appearing as a shining light that he does, it all means absolutely nothing because it doesn't compare to the power of God. Listen, we've got to let our hearts sing out the melody of God. We've got to let the melody of heaven rest in our hearts. You see, this message was birthed in a prayer meeting. I heard the Iranian singing and then I heard the Brazilian church, they were singing and then I heard the English church singing and one of the things that really touched my heart is as I listened, I pictured 
us on earth joining those that were singing in the heavenly choir and we were all singing the same song and there were many languages and there were many tongues but we're all singing the same melody because that we're all singing the same song the song of the lamb we're all singing to jesus from our hearts and i want to encourage you that even where you are right now you can join the melodies of heaven and you can join the choir of heaven rejoicing and praising Jesus for all that he's done and for all that he's doing. Don't underestimate the power of worship. You see, in the Bible, in Romans chapter 6, verse 13, it says, Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, members as instruments of righteousness of God. We are instruments we are used to play a song. We are part of that melody that are going to be used to play the song and the praise and the share the gospel. We are being used in a song to minister before the Lord. And we're called to be a part of this. It's not just those on stage, not just those with the heavenly voices, which I don't have, by the way. But it's for all of us to be able to sing and to make a joyful noise unto the Lord and to allow the Lord to sing a song through our hearts that magnifies himself right here in our presence and on the earth. Let a joyful noise come from your mouth. You see, that instrument of righteousness, it's not just about living a sin, sinless life, living a righteous life. It's about living a life of praise and thanks and admiration to who God is. And if there's anything I want you to learn, or anything my heart desires and cries out and is praying for people to have this lot there, it's to be able to be an instrument of God's righteousness and to be able to connect to something deep this lot there and spiritually be connected with God. You see, when the Bible speaks of Paul the Apostle, it says this, for he was a chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles. You let me see, we're all instruments. We've all been chosen to play a song for God. God has chosen you. You want to know why the devil hates you so much? It's because when he fell, he was no longer to be the worship leader. His judgment is set, but yours is not. God has died and gone to the cross so that you can be forgiven for your sins and for your wrongs. But Satan's judgment is written. God has chosen you to be his newest instrument, to play a new song in the heaven. You see what we've done? We've taken the devil's old position of glory and splendor and God has given it to us and made it our own. He's made us the people that would lead in worship and bringing in God's presence into this world and showing the praise and the joy of the Lord and declaring his coming. It's us. We've been the chosen people, declared, set apart to do what? To minister his melody from heaven. You and I have been chosen to replace the devil and the devil is jealous of what we have. He's jealous of our redemption. He's jealous of our forgiveness. He's jealous of who we are. He's jealous that in Acts chapter two, that the church were able to gather many voices and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and their many voices joined together in prayer and in praise and magnified the name of Jesus. And everyone was able to understand and to hear what God was doing. I'm gonna leave you with one more verse. Don't underestimate the power of God working through one person in a lockdown that's singing a song, that's praying a prayer and it's getting to God. Don't underestimate the power of what God can do through one person. Yes, God will magnify himself and will be stronger when we gather as a church. Listen, I want you to be desperate to be back in the house of God. There's nothing wrong with mourning and lamenting saying, I want to be in the house of God. I want to be with one another. I want to be with my brothers and sisters. There's nothing wrong with being desperate to be with family time. We need to be in church and it's a good, healthy desire to have. But don't allow yourself to be blinded to the fact that God is with you right now and that God has given you victory and he's given you a song to sing. I read about a boy called David, King David. And as a young boy, he played a beautiful song. And let me show you the power of one man's worship. And it reads in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 16, and then verse 23. And the servant said, let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp. And it shall be that he will play with his hand when the distressing spirit from God is upon you and you shall be well. Here we read about King Saul and there's an evil spirit that's tormenting him. But when David or this young man is going to come and play an instrument, it's going to be well with his soul. Let me read another verse for you, verse 23. And it reads, And so it was, 
whenever the spirit from God was upon Saul, that David would take a harp and play it with his hand. Then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. The song that you minister will refresh not just your soul, but the souls of those that you're near. So don't stop ceasing to pray and to praise and to seek God during this lockdown. I know you've heard prayer last lockdown, but I'm telling you this lockdown, be a worshipper of him. Get in the engine room, stay in prayer, stay connected to your friends and your family, stay connected to the church. God bless you. Until next time, can't wait to see you in person, couple of weeks. Amen. Good night.